Mario. Yes, sir. We talked a lot of Bill's stuff the last few months. We have. With not a lot of Bill's stuff going on. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, we're glad all of you have, you know, come along for the ride. Yeah. But there's really nothing that gets Bill's fans going. I mean, more than, more than some Jenny Cream Ale. But aside from a case of Jenny Cream Ale and the Hammer Lot. Yes. Sleepers. Sleepers. Bill's Mafia loves the Sleep. underdog. Yes. They love the underdog. <laughs> So let's let's pick some underdogs. Let's talk. Let's talk about guys who are going to make an impact in 2020 that nobody's talking about. Nobody. So what I'm thinking, and I just started an episode, so <clears throat> it's it's fun to do these episodes because. We're obviously, um, I like talking about guys that nobody talks about anyway. Right. And it, it gives the mafia and the nation some guys to look out for you know, sure. during camp. You may see this guy. Well, yep. who's that? Well, you know, this may be this guy. Um, you know, they might be making an impact and stuff like that, which is always fun to talk about. Yep. I think Teron Johnson was that, was that kid for me um, a couple years ago mm -hmm. um, before he got hurt and all this other stuff. I, I love Teron Johnson. I thought he was going to be, I think he's going to be great. I think he's still going to be great. Um, Point being is this. Let's each take one from the offense, one from the defense, who we think is going to be the sleeper. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm down with that. But first, this time episode, to pay some bills. Time to pay some bills. <laughs> Hopefully not Dawkins. That's... I'm kidding. It's a joke. I'm not taking you down that road again. So uh, we had uh, vinyl decals made up. If you want one of these, hit us up at uh, htagsports at gmail.com. Uh, the Murano's rocking one. Uh, my Prius is rocking one. They look phenomenal. Uh, they can go on a window. They can go on your car. They can go on a binder. They can go on your laptop. They can go on anything you want. Yes. Uh, they're just final stickers. So if you want one, hit us up. Uh, we'll charge you like what? Five bucks? I don't care. It doesn't matter. We'll have, we'll have that ironed out. <laughs> yeah. Each of them comes with a, each of them comes with a wristband. <laughs> no, we can't mail those. <laughs> <laughs> we can mail the decals though. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, getting over to that, the uh, the sleeper. You want to go offense or defense first? Uh, let's go defense first. Okay. Or do you want to do your offense, my defense? No, my we'll, we'll, we'll start defense. Okay. We'll start defense. Okay. Uh, sleeper for you. On the defensive side of the ball, I think I might know who it is. In 2020, I think I'm going to surprise you. I think he has. I think he has two first names. No, it's not Voshan. It's Jensen. not Voshan Johnson. <laughs> Although I think that's a great one, right? I'm yeah. Super. What a he's an athlete. I'm right? so excited to see what he does. I me too. I mean, I'm really excited about him. Um, no, it is uh, Dane Jackson. Love, Ooh, love seventh Jackson. rounder. Seventh rounder. He's going to get cut. He's going to get cut. He's going to get put on waivers. Mm. And then barring a Levi Wallace, Josh Norman, slow failure, right? Yeah. Because I, here's what's happening, right? They're deep. You're, you're trust in, in EJ Gaines, right? But you, you ended up moving away from Wallace because you needed a man corner because you were kind of getting burned on that side of the field. And then they bring in Norman, who's not really a man corner. And they bring back EJ Gaines, who's also not really a man corner. Um, and you're looking at Dane Jackson, who is the captain of the defense. So, like, uh, and, and, Pitt, and, he, and, Pitt. He, and Pitt, and okay. he played man, right? Yeah. So I, I look at Dane Jackson, this guy who's probably going to get cut, probably put on waivers, likely on the practice squad. But... Um, He's just, he is that perfect Sean McDermott, Leslie Frazier guy who's yeah. going to come in and at the end of the end of the season, uh, make an impact. I don't really expect him to make an impact at the beginning of the season, but if there's a guy to be excited about, uh, to me, of a new addition, it's, it's Dane Jackson. I love him. His tape is awesome. They're going to need, he needs some work, right? But I don't know where you're going to get work better than Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier. Right, yeah. Like you grab a player like Dane Jackson in the seventh round because he's available because you have Trey White who you don't know what you're doing within a couple of years, right? You still got an open CB two spot. You've got three guys who could fill it between Levi Wallace, Josh Norman, and EJ Gaines. But that's why I think 
Dane Jackson's a perfect sleeper because nobody's expecting him to contribute. Nobody expects it. And they can carry a bunch of quarters, and he can sit there and play special teams for you. And he'll do it, and he'll get the job done, and he'll be solved. And uh, he might make the roster, but I'm expecting by right around halfway through the season, you're going to get a nice little dose of Dane Jackson, and uh, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be quite delicious. I uh, <laughs> this is gonna be a tasty treat. I agree with the player. I disagree with the position. Oh, okay. Because you have Teron Johnson, because you have EJ Gaines, right. more than likely those guys are going to be your slot guys. Yeah. Two guys who haven't really proven. They could stay a 16-game season. Sure, absolutely. We know Bean and McDermott are so concerned, not really concerned, but they like insurance policies. Mm -hmm. They like having a backup for yeah. a backup. Right. So if Gaines and, and Johnson are in the slot and you got a guy, remember now the slot position is the money position. Yeah, that's, a, guys, that's a big you need deal. a money you need that's a money a man deal. guy for that because yeah. You can't really put a safety over top of there. He's more all over the top of the outside guy. So when you're occupying Hyde Norman on one side, you got Trey locked down on the other side. Who's going to man that slot corner? Dane Jackson, like you said, experienced playing man, could be one of those guys that's just like, listen, I'm going to lock down this slot receiver right now because Gaines got cut again and Teron Johnson's hurt. <laughs> no, I hope that doesn't happen. But the point is, they love the insurance policy. They love when guys earn their spot. He was a captain. That's a huge thing for them. Bay. So. He is a leader. He's a guy that's going to bust his butt to earn his spot. And then once he earns his spot, he's going to stay there. That's – I love that pick, but I love him more as a slot corner. Sure. And here's the thing. Here's the greatest part about it. You took Dane Jackson, former captain, physical player, man guy, in the seventh round, and he's third deep if you decide to play him at slot. Yeah. How about the depth on this team? Right. I mean, it's sickening. Well, depth in the secondary, yes. Depth at the linebacker position, debatable. No, I mean, that's, that's why you have so many hybrids on the team. Yeah. Poyer can come down in the box. You got Klein sure. in the box. You know, you have options there because sure. Poyer did come down in the box when Milano was hurt a couple years right. ago. And I understand that fully. My sleeper for the defensive side of the ball is a guy that we have not seen for a year. Harrison Phillips? Harrison Phillips. Oh, Okay. You know how I love them trenches. Yeah, I know you do. Everyone's talking about Starla Tulele, Ed Oliver, mm -hmm. Jefferson, yep. Butler, uh, uh, AJ Epineza, uh, maybe Trent Murphy. Maybe you're talking about Jerry Hughes. This guy, when he went out last year, there was a, a significant drop off in the run defense. Yep. Now, something that we haven't heard about when Kyle Williams, who Let's, let's be honest. Harrison Phillips was the heir apparent to Kyle Williams. And when Kyle Williams was in there, we didn't hear anything about the run defense suffering. Right. Okay. So you draft a guy that has a specific set of skills, and I'll wait so you can do the take and quote. Um, but he comes in there, if he, and he's back at 100%. I know he was doing some workouts the other day. He's a guy that's going to be in that rotation that will shore up those first and second down runs that you're not going to – he, he just loves plugging up the notes. Right. Former wrestler. <laughs> so that being said, I cannot wait. I, now, I know we this is sleepers, and some people are probably already talking about Harrison Phillips coming back. You know, he kind of gets lost. But I think he gets lost in the mix because I, he hasn't been there. Well, and not only that, but he got – and I know this sounds silly, but you just mentioned Beauchamp Joseph a few minutes ago. Yeah. They got hurt at the right time. Right? Yes. Because they had the whole season and an entire off season. To, uh, to get back on track, right, and to, and to recover without the fear of having to produce for your team. Yes. It was clear, you're done, right? When Voshan, they IR'd, they IR'd him before the season. You're done. Mm -hmm. That's it. You cannot contribute this season. Get your body right, and, and let's try again, right? Um, so they've had ample amounts of time to actually recover, uh, which players don't – they don't get that luxury all the time. No. They don't. No. Um, the, no, I'm I'm inclined to agree. I think Phillips is uh, often a forgotten man on yes, the inside. He definitely is, and and with the um, as we've said many times, and nobody's you guys are not um, immune to it. The rotation mm -hmm. that happens in that front in that front wall. Um, I mean, you took Phillips out; those guys were playing a few more snaps than they usually do. Sure, you get gassed. Yeah, that's, that's usually what happens. And it's not a knock on the defensive line; that's just what happens when you're in the trenches. It's noisy in there. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> sure is.
Moving over to the offensive side of the ball. Do you want to go first this time? You can go first this time. It's entirely my game. Okay, well, I'll go. I, and I'm not going to steal yours. Are you ready? Hmm. My sleeper pick is Tyler Croft. Tyler Croft! Tyler Croft. Now, I'll pause so that you can all go into the comments section and say what you want to say about Tyler Croft, as you were. All right. <laughs> So, <laughs> and here, here's why I think Tyler Croft is a sleeper. He dealt with injury issues the whole... Whoop, it might be... Oh, it's fine. My guitar player. What was that? What? It's just a bass, whatever ringer comes on the phone. You can change it. I thought I was starting to watch a movie. <laughs> Tyler so, Croft, huh? So, the reason I picked Tyler Croft is because... Um, he was hurt for a vast, you know, for, he was hurt all season. Truthful, I mean, truthfully speaking, he was hurt all season. Played hurt even when he was back on the field. Um, but I think he makes your offense less predictable, right? When you have uh, when you have Lee Smith in there, your offense is pretty predictable. Mm -hmm. When you have Dawson Knox in there, he's not the most prolific blocker, so your offense is still kind of predictable, right? Mm -hmm. You have Tyler Croft in there, he's a better run blocker, than Dawson Knox. He's a better receiving threat than Lee Smith. I think he makes your offense a little bit less predictable because you can't look at the personnel and say, uh, when this personnel is out here 64% of the time, these are the plays they run. Yeah. When Croft is out there, totally changes the complexity of the offense. So while the production might not always be there, his impact is not going to be related to the receptions that he makes. His impact is going to be keeping yeah. that linebacker on him at all times, right? Taking up a body. And if you can have a tight end, take up a body, then they're doing their job. Yeah, I, I think for the reasons that you stated, plus, you know, you like to, and you're going to hate me right now. Sure. That's okay. I always hate you. That's all right. <laughs> now, we talk about, you talk about, I'm sorry, not, not we, you. You talk about pages to the playbook that are missing uh -huh. for Brian Dable. Yep. If we truly believe that this is a system that is a that is derivative of the New England Patriots, mm -hmm. what do the New England Patriots do with their tight ends? Multiple tight ends, mm -hmm. multiple facets to their game. Right. A Tyler Croft, Dawson Knox double tight end set mm -hmm. opens up so many things right. for your offense. It does. Wasn't able to do that last year. Nope. So there, therefore, pages out of the book were taken mm -hmm. because you can't do that with Lee Smith. No. Sweeney was still a young pup. Well, and Jason Kroon was done. And Kroon was all. So you couldn't do it. You, right. There was pages of the book that weren't there. When you want to go double tight now, mm -hmm. and you got Croft and Knox in there, are they passing? Are, are they running? What are they doing? Right. Knox is going to have another year under his belt as a blocking tight end. Croft was already very seasoned at that as well. Right. So now you can add more layers to the offense. Right. Yeah. If, if you really believe that it, it came down from New England, and Brian Dable has more of the playbook to play with. Sure. I mean, not that he doesn't already, but Diggs on the field. I mean, jeez. I know. Well, and, you know, you look at the dynamic playmakers that they have at tight end. They have, I mean, they, they have some, like, Knox is, Knox is a good player. His drops concern me a little bit, right? Yes. You do have Chrome, who, who knows what's going to happen there. No idea what's going to happen with Jason Chrome. But he might be going the way of Robert Foster, where just what you saw on a 6-10 and 10 team is not what you're going to see on a 10-16 team. Well, he didn't accrue a season, so he's still sure trying to spot out. I think. I think. I was split for my offensive guy. Okay. I was very split on who I was going to pick as my sleeper. Because one really isn't a sleeper, and one is completely in a coma. What? If, if you are going to say... If you're going to say a drafted quarterback from Georgia is your sleeper, we're going to have a problem here. Good God. Good God. <laughs> okay. Do you know me better than that? You love your quarterbacks, man. I do love my quarterbacks. What do I love better? What do I love better than quarterbacks? Boobs. <laughs> <laughs> and we're demonetized. <laughs> the guy that protects the quarterback. The guys that protect the quarterback. Yeah, right. I was split. I was going to say Mitch Morse was my sleeper okay. because a guy who missed time, didn't really have a lot of consistency, 
a guy who came over from Kansas City who worked with Mahomes, can can bring along a young quarterback. It seemed like a lot of times Feliciano was his crutch. I don't know what's going on in the trenches. I can only guess. But with Feliciano playing a significant amount of time at center, Morris, every time he went out, Feliciano went in there. That was the deal. But I'm not going to go with Morris, even though I think that his role on this team is not mentioned enough. Constructive criticism? Yes. Picking a sleeper that's your highest paid player on the offensive line, not a good look. Who's talking about? <laughs> Who's talking about? Who's talking about Mitch Morris? It's a sleeper, not the money bags. <laughs> Let's talk about top five quarters in the league. Oh, Darius Slay is really good. Who the? Who? Who's Darius Slay? Who's Darius Slay? <laughs> Sorry, D Wagon. Most of these guys never had a prime. <laughs> The guy who I'm going to pick, though, as the sleeper, because I think it's going to, it's going to be a <laughs> trouble, is Trey Adams. Come on! Come on! That, you want to talk about insurance? You want to he talk about an talent? Insurance policy. You want to talk about yeah. a guy who, if, if what you believe and what you've said to me before is yeah. true about Ford going down to guard, yeah. And then Feliciano. I really think it's a reality. Okay, Ford. If that's a reality, where Ford goes down to guard, which I think he could be amazing tomorrow mm -hmm. at guard, then you're not going to hinge all your money on Ty Nasecki. Possibly Bates. I'm not saying Bates isn't out of the question. I really like Bates, but Adams is that guy that if he can get everything fixed, that's your right tackle right there, and not just your right tackle. If you don't sign Dawkins. He could be your left half. He could be your left half. He's, he's, he's got all the physical play. tools, man. Yeah, he does. It's he played he played a season having missed two seasons, basically. Yeah. Um, and for those of you on the uh, what Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl and up, and up. Pro, Pro Bowl. Bowl and up, there is a scouting video of Trey Adams where we go through some film and uh, we talk about the things he does really well, things that uh, he doesn't do well. So if you haven't hit that join button, you want to see that? Go ahead and do that. Um, all 50% of the money that we make uh, from uh, the uh, subscriptions uh, go to the Pond Foundation. So there's, there's a scouting video of, of Trey Adams that we did a while ago. That is out there for you. Um, so if we're talking about a sleep, I just think that with the, with the skills and the abilities that this kid possesses, yeah, he could easily be a solid foundational tackle for you. Four years to come. It is tough for me to pick against Trey Adams because I re he's one of the, in, in my opinion, he was one of the best pass protection tackles in the draft, mm. right? But the injuries killed him. Yeah. He didn't have a real good senior season, and you know how that's, you know how that kind of stuff goes. He was undrafted. That's yeah. how it goes. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I mean, right? But um, I really like Trey Adams. I just don't think it's this year. So I like, I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying a lot. But I just I think he needs a full room a full season with that strength and conditioning program, um, which but, is the best in the league. Which is the best in the league. It's, it admittedly is the best in the league. That is not debatable. I it's would the best in the league. I would venture to say that my feelings and opinions about Trey Adams mirror yours about Dane Jackson. That's very fair. Because that's very you fair. maybe say yeah. Jackson maybe not this year. Right. You got it. But he's yeah. on a four year deal. Yeah. Adams, you have. Really, for the next three or four, to, you know, on this. on league minimum, league minimum, yeah, yeah. <laughs> league minimum. do whatever okay. you want. But you have a develop, you have two developmental projects, both on the offense and defense, who have so much ability, right, and things that you need on both sides of the ball right now, though. And think about it, right? We're talking about an undrafted guy and a seventh round player, and these are not unrealistic. Well, sleepers. these are sleepers. It's sleepers. Not, but they're not unrealistic. But we've sleepers. seen Matt Milano, a fifth rounder. Yeah. We've seen. Um, uh, you know, we talk about the late round draft picks that they always have. Um, Sweeney, mm -hmm. Sweeney's not hateful. I mean, oh. you, you can hate on Sweeney if you want. But but he's any, any guy that's drafted after the fifth round, if he contributes to your team the year that he's drafted, good for you. Exactly. That's, that's just the Your truth. scouting department did its job. Yeah, good good for you. You did good Or job. you were just horrible. <laughs> Robert Foster. Oh, no. <laughs> we so. got to talk about Robert Foster. I cut up a whole bunch of Robert Foster clips. We, we got to watch those. This is what you guys do to us. <laughs>